Hello, everybody. Welcome to Therapeutic Yoga class today. We are going to do an entire class on our feet and balance. So what you're going to need for class today is a yoga mat, uh, a yoga strap. We're going to work a little bit some neural tension in our in our lower legs, which can majorly impact your balance, by the way. Uh, we're going to start sitting on a bolster. Now, for you at home, if Getting to and from the floor is a bit of a challenge. We're going to be working on getting up from the floor today. So we're going to start on the floor, get up into standing, and then come back down onto the floor. So by all means, feel free to start in a chair if you like. But the challenge of starting on the floor today is you'll get that good little quad workout and we'll really learn the safe way to sit and stand from the floor. Okay, so now that I've said all that, Find yourself in a seated position on your bolster. Tailor sitting is preferred. If you've got really tight hips, you need to be a little bit higher, and then you can kind of elevate your elevate your bolster a little bit off of the floor. Um, but once you're there, just allow yourself to roll your pelvis a couple times forward and backwards to kind of find that middle of the road of your pelvis. And then once you have that middle of the road of your pelvis, kind of sit your spine nice and tall. Allow yourself to take your hands like you're holding a tray in front of you and just shrug your shoulders for a little bit. Let's set our scapulas here. Just allow yourself to roll your arms outward with your shoulders shrugged and then pull your elbows back and down. That really nicely sets those shoulder blades on the rib cage. Then squeeze between those shoulder blades and then just unrotate the hands and place them on the thighs. Now, check in right now. Do you have full weight through your feet? Can you easily pick them up? I can. So even though I've gotten myself nice and aligned through my trunk, I need a little bit more of a hip hinge myself. So all I'm going to do is hinge from my hips, not move my spine. And now there's no way for me to pick up my legs. I know I have a nice good base of support. Okay. So now in this position, we're going to start with, uh, I guess I would say a little bit of a body awareness exercise with a breathing exercise, but we're not going to cheat and look. So we're gonna do some toe movements with breath since we're doing a foot class today. So lengthen your neck, settle your chin, close your eyes for me. And your legs are crisscrossed applesauce right now, but I want you to think about where is my right big toe. Once you've figured out where your right big toe is, what I want you to do is take a nice, deep, slow inhale into your nose and kind of let your toe lift upward like you're kind of pulling it into extension away from the palm of your foot. And then as you exhale, curl the big toe under. Like the neck, settle the, the, the chin into the throat. Keep the eyes closed if you're comfortable with it. Now, think about your right second toe. I know sometimes those toes all kind of feel like one, but think about where that right second toe is and take an inhale and extend and lift that toe. And then as you exhale, curl that toe. Don't fret, you know, other toes are moving with it, but I want you to think about that toe for a second. Go to that third toe on your right foot. And then as you inhale, kind of lift that toe upward into extension. And then as you slowly exhale, curl that toe under and then relax. And then go to that fourth toe on your right foot. Feel where that is. And then as you inhale, try to extend it, lift it up. And then as you exhale, curl it under. And then finally go to that pinky toe on that right foot. And as you inhale, extend it, lift it up. And then as you exhale, just gently curl that toe under. Others are gonna join it, that's okay, and then just relax. All right, let's go to your left foot now, starting with that big toe. Think about where that big toe is in space, and then allow yourself to take a slow and deep and steady inhale into your nose as you extend that left big toe upward. Maybe the other toes go with it, maybe they don't. And then as you exhale, curl that big toe under. And then relax it, go to your second toe, and then allow yourself to think about that second toe and lifting or extending that toe up. Big toe may go with it, so may the others, but focus on the second toe. Then exhale, curl that second toe under. And then go to that third toe, that kind of 
hard to place in your brain, but it does have a little space in your brain. Inhale, extend that third toe. Can you even think about that third toe relative to the second and fourth? And then as you exhale, curl it under. And then go to the fourth toe. And then as you inhale, extend it up. And then as you exhale, curl it under. All right, we got one left to go. You go to your fifth toe on the left foot here. And then as you extend, feel that one. You might even have it touch the floor, so that one's easy to find. And then as you exhale, curl that toe under. And then slowly relax and gently open your eyes. So a couple of things we were doing there, obviously just getting a nice rhythmic breath, but doing body awareness and movement of our body really good things to do to try to get yourself centered and right in this present minute. I guarantee you, you weren't thinking about any phone calls or to-do lists because you were already doing too many things with your brain with breath and movement. Okay, so let's get started on this foot class with balance today. So here's what I want you to do. Take your left leg and kind of straighten the left leg out in front of you and then take your right ankle and bring it up and over that left leg. Now, if you've got excellent flexibility in your hips, you may even want to bend your left foot a little bit and bring your legs a little bit closer to you. It's all a matter as to how much flexibility you have in that right foot. Regardless of where you pick, uh, what you want to be doing is taking this left hand and finding the toes on the right foot. Now, option number two is you can actually stay in a tailor sitting pose and just have the leg kind of gently crossed as you do that. So this is a little bit of a variation on fire log pose. Uh, if you imagine this is a log and this is a log, you're trying to stack those and open the hips at the same time. So pick whichever you like, but get that right foot and that left hand to, to start dating. Then index finger on the left hand, place it between the first and the second of the right foot. And then begin to interlace every single finger between every single toe. And so as you do that, all you're really doing to the bones of your forefoot is you're starting to spread them and find space, which, you know, oftentimes we lose uh, because of the fact that we delightfully wear shoes all day long, some of us. So what I want you to do is get those fingers as deeply into those toes as possible and then hold them there. Allow yourself to give a little bit of a squeeze of your hand. As you give a bit of a squeeze of that hand, all of those bones of your forefoot start to spread out. So you get nice, good spread of those metatarsals. Now just gently hold this position. Depending on your tightness of your right hip, you may have rolled all the way back on your pelvis. So use your right hand onto your right leg and pull yourself back up into a seated position. Nice, good hip opening at the same time here. Now, holding this, lengthen the neck, settle the chin, shoulder blades, bring them back and down, tongue to the roof of the mouth. Maintain that opening through those toes and that forefoot. And then just take a slow, gentle, deep inhale into the belly as the belly expands out. And then gentle, slow exhale out through the nose as the belly falls inward. You got it. Maybe put your hand on your belly if you need to. Nice, gentle inhale inward. And exhaling out. Let's do one more breath here. Nice, deep inhaling in. And exhaling out, beautiful. Release the left fingers from the right toes. Take the right leg out. So option one, you just cross the left ankle over the right knee and the right hand and the left foot find each other there. Option two, you wanna do a little bit of a left hip stretch. You can kind of bend up your right foot a little bit and have them dating. Finally, option three, which is the one I'm gonna pick is a variation on fire log pose where you're trying to just kind of line up those shin bones and get good opening through the hips while we address our feet today. All right, now in this position, right hand, left foot, index finger starts, bring it between that first and second toe and then go into each one of them interlacing fingers to toes and then push them down in there as much as you can. As you get them in there nice and snug, then just kind of gently grip through your right hand. That kind of just spreads all of those bones open, which is exactly what we want. Then once you have that left hand onto the knee, 
Allow yourself to make sure you're sitting up nice and tall and you haven't rolled backwards on your sacrum into that low back, creating stress, which we don't want to do. Shoulder blades are back and down, lengthen the neck, settle the chin, tongue to the roof of the mouth. And if you do like, go ahead and feel free to close your eyes. We're going to do those three deep belly breaths again. So keep, keep, keep squeezing as you're spreading and opening up through those toes. Nice, gentle, deep inhale in. And exhaling out. Deep inhaling in. And exhaling out. Nice, good squeeze. Let's do one beautiful diaphragmatic breath into that belly. Deep inhale in. And exhaling out. You've got it. All right, releasing right hand from toes, uncrossing that right leg. Now we're going back to the right foot and the left hand for a minute. So once again, bring that right ankle up onto that left leg, however you like. Pick whichever pose you want. If you're in a chair, obviously all you're doing is just crossing your legs. But what we want to do is something called distraction. Now, let me tell you something about joints. Joints get compressed. We know this with back and neck because that's the areas we always have pain in because those joints are getting compressed. But guys, these toe joints also get compressed, meaning that the joint spaces forget that there's actually supposed to be space between them. Well, if we're gonna be working on balance today, we really wanna make sure that we give those joints the most space that they can have between them. So I'm gonna show you a quick little trick to make not necessarily your toes longer, but to give you space between those joints, particularly if you're starting to notice some deformity between certain toes. So here's what I want you to do. Left hand, thumb and index finger, grab your big toe. Once you have your big toe, all you're gonna do is try to pull that toe away from your foot. As you're pulling that toe away from your foot, there are multiple joints in there that you're distracting and creating space to. You may even feel a nice good little popper snap, sitting up nice and tall, hold that there, keep holding, give me a nice deep belly breath, and exhaling and let the fingers come away from it. All right, go to the second toe. Now, as you get to that second toe, there's actually two different knuckles before you get to the base of the toe. So you want to pull all of them. So get a hold of the end of that second toe real close to the nail bed and pull it right away. As you pull it, maybe you get a nice good little snap or pop. Hold it right there. Take a deep inhale in and an exhale out and let the fingers come off. Kind of like we're having our own little pedicure here, but we're really doing something fabulous for our toes. Therefore, something fabulous for our balance in a little bit. Third toe, pull that toe out, really create length through that toe, deep inhale and exhale. Let the fingers come off. Go to that fourth toe. My fourth toe always pops. Oh, there it went. All right, pull that fourth toe away from you. Nice deep inhale and exhale and then let it go and then finally grab that pinky pull that pinky out get nice good space between those joints deep inhale in exhale out and pull the fingers off all right switch a -roozy. so right leg is under left leg is on top grab that left foot again right index finger and thumb those are the ones that you're working on here allow yourself to pull that big toe away. You really want to create some nice good space in that joint. I can even feel mine popping, which is good. You've got some bunions happening here. This is a great thing to do to really get some nice good space in that joint. Holding it here, nice deep inhale and exhaling out and letting that toe go. Go to the second toe, grab near the nail bed so you get all of those joints. Pull that foot, that toe straight out away. As you're doing that deep inhale in and exhale out and let the fingers come off. All right, third, third toe, pull it out, really pull it. Oh, I got two pops on that one. Nice deep inhale in and exhaling out. Good job. Go to the fourth toe, really pull. Oh, got two pops on that one too. Really pull it out. Nice deep inhale. And exhale, obviously, the popping doesn't need to happen. It just does indicate that you're creating good space in those joints. Finally, pinky toe, 
pull that pinky toe out nice and wide. Give it a good length. Give it a nice deep inhale. Exhale and let it go. You've got it. Now, gently place your feet on the floor. You can have it so that your knees are kind of stacked underneath your ankles if you've got sufficient hip range of motion. We're only going to be here for a few seconds. But here's what I want you to do. Take your hands around your shin bones. Take a nice deep inhale. Sit up nice and tall. And as you exhale, pull your knees to your chest. Elbows tuck in. Shoulders are down. Lengthen your neck. Settle your chin and gaze at your big toes. Okay. Now that you're gazing at your big toes, go to the right big toe. Inhale, lift that toe up. Now keep that toe nice and high. And then as you exhale, pull that big toe down, but keep those other toes nice and high. Inhale, lift the toe up. Exhale, drop that big toe down. We're going to do a third time. You know it. Nice deep inhale, lifting that toe up. And then as you exhale, dropping that big toe down and then relaxing those toes. That big toe, being able to control that movement of that big toe is one of the most important things you can do to improve your balance. Let's go to this left foot, keeping those knees to your chest nice and tall. Elbows are tucked, shoulder blades are back and down. Lengthen the neck, settle the chin, gaze at that left big toe. All right, here we go. Inhale, lift the toes up, just the big toe now. As you exhale, drop the big toe down. As you inhale, lift those toes up. Exhale, drop just the big toe down. One more time here. Inhale, lift those toes up, and then exhale, drop that big toe down. Beautiful, relax your toes. All right. Slowly let your left leg kind of relax out in front of you and then take your right leg and bring your right leg down into the corner of your yoga mat. Once you have that, let your left knee bend in and feel for you that the back of your knee hits somewhere near the corner of that bolster. That way we're working on the mobility of the nerves of our feet here and not just the ankle, the sciatic nerve at the knee. So now in this position, grab your yoga strap and then take your yoga strap and place the yoga strap around the balls of the toes. Once you have that yoga strap around the balls of the toes, here's what I want you to do. Take your pelvis and face your pelvis and your shoulders towards that foot. Lengthen your neck, settle, chin, settle the chin and even gaze at that foot. And then use those hands with that strap and start to stretch through that ankle joint. All right, so loss of dorsiflexin, dorsiflexion, the movement that your ankle is doing right now, one of the key parameters that causes people to fall as they're aging. So how about it's really important for us to really get this movement. So let your knee be bent for a second. Really pull at your foot. Even try to sit yourself back. You're putting so much great tension into that stretch of that ankle joint. Holding it here. Let's do a couple nice deep inhales into our belly. So deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. One more time. Nice deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. Beautiful. Sitting up nice and tall. A little bit of nerve stretching here. So straightening the knee for me. Keep that ankle in that position. Take an inhale and straighten the knee. Oh, hello, sciatic nerve. As you exhale, relax it down. Let's do two more breaths. Nice deep inhale, straightening. Exhale, relaxing. And final time here, inhaling, straightening through that ankle and exhaling and relaxing. Beautiful. Taking that strap away from that ankle and foot. Allowing yourself to turn yourself now to the left corner of the bolster. So you might need to move yourself a little bit over like I did. Have your left foot facing the corner of your mat and your right foot is just gently in. You're using your right foot here a little bit more for balance, but make sure that the back of the thigh above the knee is where it's hitting the corner of the bolster. That's the perfect place to be here. And then take your yoga strap. Around the ball of the toes is where we need it. Now, if you don't have strong hands and when you pull, it's difficult for you, just let yourself loop the strap around your hands. It's a really easy trick that allows you to use more arm and less hand and wrist. But in this position, here's what I want you to do. Let your knee stay bent and really pull that ankle. 
you'll feel the Achilles, a muscle called the soleus, which is back there near that Achilles. Once you have that ankle motion, sit back. We'll put every bit of weight into it. It's a fabulous stretch for the ankle and that lower tendon and muscle. All right, now holding this position, let's find two nice deep inhales and exhales into that belly. So slow inhale in and exhaling out. Let's do one more breath. Nice deep inhaling in. And exhaling out, beautiful. Keep the tension on the ankle, but sit yourself up nice and tall. And let's do three breaths into the sciatic nerve on this leg. So keeping the tension on the ankle, take an inhale, straighten the knee. And then as you exhale, relax it. Two more times. Inhale, straighten that knee. Exhale, relax it. One final time here. Inhale, straighten that knee and exhale and relax it. You've got it. Slowly releasing the strap away from the foot. We are done with the strap. So you can kind of just take your strap and gently move it out to the side of you. Now we are transitioning to hands and knees here. So we're not going to use the bolster. However, we are going to use the bolster to get up into standing unless you've got a chair near you. So don't throw your bolster away yet, but slowly bring yourself over onto your hands and knees and just gently move your bolster off to the side just for a moment. And then place yourself so that your wrists and elbows are underneath your shoulders, index fingers are pointed forward, knees are underneath the hips and knees are hip distance. And if you look back, you don't see your feet on the inside or the outside. All right, so we're only staying here for just a few short minutes to continue stretching out these calf muscles before we get into working our balance today. So lengthen your neck, settle your chin, gaze at your thumbs here. All right, so let's go through three cat cows. So as you inhale, sink your belly, lift your tailbone, shoulder blades back and down, lengthen that chest, gaze upward for me. And then as you exhale, push into the index fingers and thumbs, tuck the tailbone under, chin to chest, gaze into your belly button. Two more times here, inhaling, sinking everything down, really nicely lengthening through the uh, front of your body and then exhaling, curling everything under, lengthening through the backside of your body. Just one more time, inhaling. And exhaling. Beautiful. All right, now here's what I want you to do. You're gonna take your right foot and put your right foot out straight. Now, when you do that, make sure that your left leg bone doesn't kind of fall to the side. Uh, keep your left leg bone perfectly perpendicular to the floor. Get your right knee as straight as you can. Tighten through your abdominal muscles. Then take a nice deep inhale here. And as you exhale, push back into that heel. Can you take a quick little look at your right heel and make sure that it's lined up with the outside of your foot and not turned in? So pushing with that heel keeping that right knee straight, abdominals are braced, using the arms to really push here. Let's take a nice deep inhale into the belly and exhaling out. One more breath, deep inhaling in and exhaling out, excellent. Slowly slide the right knee back into its position, rest the left foot onto the uh, right foot on the floor and then slide that left leg out. Now take a look that that heel is out. Take a look that that right leg bone didn't fall out to the side. Arms are still in their shoulder with position. Toes are turned under here. Knee on that left foot. Really straighten it. Take a nice deep inhale here and then on your exhale push back into that heel. I am tighter on my left side. Go figure. As you're pushing back into that heel, really straighten that knee, tighten those abdominals, use those arms to push yourself back. Two nice deep inhales and exhales here. Deep inhale into the belly and then exhaling out. One more time, nice deep inhale in and exhaling out. Beautiful, slowly release that left knee down. Take a nice deep inhale here. And then as you exhale, just gently sit back onto your heels for a second. Walk your hands back. Settle your belly down into your thighs. 
slowly drop your chest down onto your knees and then gently allow the crown of the head to start to come down towards the floor. All right, let's take a, a couple of breaths here. So resting in this position, give me a nice deep inhale into your belly. Exhaling out. Deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. Beautiful. Slowly pushing yourself up. Now we are just about to get up into standing. But before we do that today, I want to teach you a nice little stretch for your plantar fascia. So keep yourself in hands and knees just for a second and turn your toes under. As you turn your toes under, take a look back and make sure that your heels did not turn inward. Then slowly sit back onto your heels as much as you feel comfortable. As you do that, you'll feel that stretch through the whole bottom or plantar surface of your foot. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin, take a deep inhale here. And exhaling out. Let's do that one more time, deep inhaling in. And exhaling out. Oh, yeah. Didn't say it was going to necessarily feel the greatest, but it works. Okay, guys. Now, here's what we're doing. We are going to practice getting up to standing. Now, that doesn't sound like rocket science, but it's amazing how easy it is to learn hard habits to get up from the floor. So let's really practice a couple times, once on each side, how to get up from the floor to standing the safest way possible. So what I want you to do is we're gonna use, our, I'm gonna use my yoga bolster as something to kind of help my hands if I need it. If you've got your chair somewhere near you, then just go ahead and have that chair, pull that chair a little bit closer to you so that you've got that extra strength to use your trunk and your body. Now, step yourself forward with one leg. And so what you want to do with the left leg that stepped forward for me, it could be your right leg, that's fine. Make sure that you have your knee over your ankle area. And then with the back leg, turn the toes under. Now, if you need additional support, the hand can be on the bolster in front of you, the hand can be on the bolster beside you. But here's the mistake that most people make. They cannot get off the floor from this position because they have their rib cage behind their back leg. If you lean your rib cage over this front leg, eventually you'll build enough quadriceps strength to get up off the floor. So in this position, hands either on the bolster, you can have one hand on your thigh if you want. Take a nice deep inhale. Then on the exhale, the front leg, push and push the back leg, tighten that knee, until you find yourself all the way in the standing position simply by stepping the one foot forward. To get down to the floor, it's the exact same process. So step your right leg back, have yourself on your toes. Have something to hold yourself with if you need it. Take an inhale, abdominals are tight, and as you exhale, you slowly bend the back knee to get yourself down to the floor, the other knee follows. All right, let's try it on the other side. I bet you you're figuring out your quads are weak today, aren't you? <laughs> That's okay. So left leg is behind you, right leg is in front of you now. Get the knee on top of the ankle. Turn the left toes under. Rib cage comes up and over the front leg. If the rib cage is over this leg and you've got sufficient strength, you will make it up. If not, use something to help yourself push yourself up. Deep inhale. Exhale, push and push and push, and voila, you are up in a standing position. Okay, now, here's what I would like you to do. Have yourself a chair that you have somewhere near you. We're not using the chair to sit in. We're using it in case you need it for balance. If you've got a wall near you, that's going to work just as well. But I want you to feel comfortable that you've got something to touch and hold if you feel like your balance is not going to work so well for you. Now that you have that, before we start working on our balance, which we're gonna do a lot of balance work today, I want you to find something in front of you, and it may be my pretty face, 
but I want you to find something in front of you that you can stare at as we do our balance exercises. And so that's called Dristi, D-R-I-S-T-I in yoga. It means that you're focusing both of your optic nerves and both of your eyes onto a single non-moving object, which allows you then to really get to working the proprioceptors or the feelers of your balance a little bit more effectively. Very good. So now that you've figured out what you're going to be staring at and you've got something for balance near you, let's begin with our first balance exercise. So take your big toes and line your big toes so that they're touching one another. Then look at the outside of your feet and line up the front and the out on the outside of your feet, front and back of your mat with the outside of your feet. So you will feel intrinsically a rotating inward of your legs. That's what I want you to feel today. Then pick your toes up for a second. Those, those big toes that we practiced pushing down onto the floor, push those big toes down first. Can you feel the muscles in your inner thigh, your pelvis and everything that fire when you do that? And then drop the other toes down. I hope you did. All right, make sure you feel weight in the balls of your feet into the heels of your feet. So you might wanna rock yourself a little bit forward, a little bit backward, dependent on your balance. Allow yourself to kind of settle your tailbone down a little bit so you feel your leg bones a little bit more and your quadriceps. All right, so we're not gonna focus on the upper half of the body today. But if we were doing pure Tadasana mountain pose right now, we would make sure that our rib cage is stacked directly on top of our pelvis and our legs. Our shoulder girdles rotate those back and down so that they are sitting on the rib cage and of course, lengthening the neck and settling the chin. So just do those three things for me and then find yourself in this Tadasana. Mountain pose with toes together but we are going to make it a balance activity. So just standing here for a moment, allow yourself to feel the weight in the balls of your toes and your heels, and take a quick moment to push down into your big toes for a second so that you can feel your inner thigh and your pelvic floor engage a little bit of your glutes. Do you feel it? Good, because that's what you're gonna be focusing on to keep your balance today. All right, take a nice, slow, deep inhale into your belly. And exhaling out, one more time. Nice deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. All right, balance exercise number one. You've been staring at that dristi. Now what I want you to do, if you're comfortable with it, maybe even touching a chair if you're not comfortable with it, you be safe at home. But let's close our eyes. Now, as you close your eyes, those big toes, push them down, feel the arches engaged, feel the inner thighs engaged, feel your pelvic floor engaged, abdominals are engaged. I want you to keep thinking about pushing those big toes down. You may be swaying a little bit. If you're swaying too much, then allow yourself to gently touch that chair with a finger or two. And then let's find our belly breath for three breaths here. Nice, deep inhale into the belly. Exhaling out, don't forget you're pushing into your big toes. Deep inhale into the belly. Exhaling out, keep the eyes closed unless you need to use those eyes for balance. One more time, deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling closed. Good, gently open your eyes. All right, let's make our balance work harder. Relax your big toes for a second in case those toe flexors are getting a little tired. All right, so we're just going to stay in mountain pose, but we're gonna kind of progress it a little bit physical therapy-ish. So here's what I want you to do. Your right foot, step it forward a half a foot. The left foot, step it back a half a foot. And then see how closely chair is there for balance if you need it. How closely can you line your feet up front to back so that the outside of the right foot is lining up with the bottom of the mat and the outside of the left foot is right lining up with the top of the mat? All right. 
Can you feel the shaking happening as all of your ankle muscles are already trying to figure out how the heck you're going to keep yourself in this position? (laughs) Okay, now that you have that, here's what I need you to do. Pick up your toes, big toes, push the big toes down. Yeah, there's your balance. I bet you feel like your ankles are working a lot less now, right? Because you've got your feet involved in this. All right. Now, can you gently move yourself a little bit forward, backward, and make sure that you feel weight into the right heel, weight into the left heel and left balls of your toes? Let me repeat that. Weight into the right heel, the front heel, and the entire back foot, balls of the toes and the heel. All right. Now, are you feeling like you've got this? Hold on for as much as you need to. I promise you're still improving your balance. Now, if you've got this, take a moment to check the rib cage position, check the shoulder girdle position, check the neck and the the chin and the eye position. Find that dristy. Keep yourself staring, staring, staring at that object. If you lose your balance, guess what? You just get right back on that horse and you try again. All right. Now, here's what I want you to do. Are your Are your shin bones and your calf muscles starting to feel a little burny? Excellent. All right. So keep your eye on that dristy. Take a deep inhale into your belly. Exhaling out. Oh, yeah. Of course, we've got one more breath. Deep inhaling in. And exhaling out. All right. Place one finger on the chair. If you're already touching with one finger, place a second finger on the chair so that you don't lose your place in space. Big toes, really push them down. If you're comfortable with it, close those eyes. Deep inhale into the belly. Exhaling out, one more breath. Deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out and open your eyes. Step the right foot back a half a step. Step the left foot forward a half a step. Big toes are back to touching. You've got it. All right, let's do it on the opposite side. Left foot, step it forward a half a step. Right foot, step it back a half a step. Once you've done that, line up the the feet so that the right foot and the left foot line up front to back, as long as you're comfortable with this, you go to your level of balance. Then look at the outside of your left foot, make sure that it lines up with the top or front, uh, uh, top or bottom of your back and do the same thing with your left foot. Oftentimes guys, that back leg, you wanna keep that hip and external rotation and that doesn't allow you to get into that pelvic floor and those trunk stabilizers and the hip muscles that really help your balance. So pull that back heel out, you need to do that. All right, so now that you have this, lift all the toes up. Big toes, push those big toes down. As you push those big toes down, then let the other toes relax downward. Now, check in that you've got your base support where it needs to be. So you should feel the entire heel and balls of your toes on your right back foot. And that left foot in front, you should really feel that heel strictly engaging into the floor. Okay, just make sure your rib cage is on top of you. So gaze down at your toes for a second. Maybe a little shrug and rotation through those shoulder girdles to set your scapula, lengthen your neck, settle your chin. (sighs) So this is called tandem Romberg in the physical therapy world, but really it's just a modification on Tadasana in the yoga world. So holding this, give me those two breaths. Nice deep inhale into your belly. Exhaling out. And one more time. Nice deep inhale into the belly. Pushing into those big toes and exhaling out. You've got it. All right. Let's eliminate that dristy and those eyes, right? So we're taking away a solid third of our balance by doing that. So place a finger on that chair. We don't want anybody falling at home. If you lose your balance, just get right back and join us. Have something just to feel that you've got a little bit of sense with another uh, extremity outside of your feet. And then when you're ready, close your eyes. All right, push into those big toes. Really challenge your balance with your eyes and vision gone. Give me a nice deep inhale here into the belly. And exhaling out. 
One more time, nice deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out, beautiful, open your eyes. Left foot, step it back a half a foot. Right foot, step it forward a half a foot. Now those feet are back together once again, right? Okay, so here's what we're going to do next. We're going to single leg stand. And so for a lot of individuals that have hip weakness, have ankle and foot weakness, single leg standing is something that they lose as they age. And so we're going to do it in a safe way that's going to allow you to promote an increase in balance without hopefully losing your balance and having to take a step. So let's work through this. The safest and easy way to start to really gain strength of single leg standing and improve your balance. So please take a moment to look at your right foot. Check in that the heel is turned a little bit outward so that the outside of the foot is lining up with the top or bottom of your mat. All right. Right toes, lift them all up. Then with that right big toe, push it down and begin to feel yourself pushing down into that big toe. Hopefully, you almost feel like your body weight moves forward when you do that. Relax the other four toes downward. Now, in this position, you're holding on to that chair or that wall or whatever as much as you feel that you need to, okay? With your left foot, simply come up onto your left tippy toes. Now, if you're already feeling yourself doing this, you've met the challenge of your foot muscles and hip muscles and trunk muscles. So hold yourself right here with the focus on pushing down into that big toe. Don't feel like you let your ego get in the way and you've got to lift that leg up, okay? <laughs> let yourself, meet yourself where your balance is today. Okay, now we're pushing into that big toe. I'm just going to make sure that my rib cage is over my leg. I'm going to shrug my shoulders and kind of rotate my shoulder blades back and down. I'm going to lengthen my neck and settle my chin. I'm going to find my dristy. So find something that you're staring at that's steady and not moving. Now, if this is where you are and you already feel all of that awesome burning in your hip, then you stay right here. If you know you've got a little bit more in you at home, then allow yourself to see, can I pick up that left leg? It only needs to come up an inch off the floor to really challenge your balance, holding onto the chair at any point that you feel like you need it. Pushing into that big toe, give me a deep inhale in, and exhaling out, nice deep inhale in, exhaling out, then dropping the left toes down, dropping the left heel down, relaxing the right foot. Now, if you focused on pushing into that right big toe, you should have felt burning in your hip, burning in your calf, burning in your shin, and burning in your foot. That's what's going to get your balance better and make you stronger. Okay, let's give it a try on the left leg. So big toes together. Go to the left foot now and line up the outside of the left foot with the top or bottom of your mat. Once you've done that, then allow yourself to lift up all of those toes on the left side. Big toe, push that big toe down into the floor. As you push it down, you may even feel your body moving forward and then drop the other toes down. Keep that engagement of that big toe. That tells your arch and all of those foot muscles, all right, we need to be on. We're going to be doing something hard here. <laughs> now that you've done that, keep that engagement. Let's check in with our rib cage for a second. Okay, it's in, in front on top of my leg. Check in with your shoulder girdles. Good. You've got those set. Lengthen your neck. Settle your chin you were about to perform a single-legged standing on the left leg. So allow yourself to see what your single-legged standing is like. If you simply come up onto the tippy toes of your right foot, do you start to feel tremendous shaking or do you immediately lose your balance? If so, this is where you stay today. This is the challenge you need to get that left leg stronger. If you know you've got more in you, feel free to hold onto your chair or whatever you need. 
Remember, you're pushing into that left big toe. Are you feeling your left hip muscles yet? Okay, if that's the case and you wanna give yourself some more today, allow yourself to lift the right foot off the floor. Focus on your drishti. It's about pushing into that big toe, feeling all those muscles engaged. Give me those two breaths. Nice deep inhale into the belly and exhaling out one more time. Deep inhaling in and then exhaling out and relaxing the right foot down. You did it. Fabulous job. So those are three variations on Tadasana, mountain pose that I encourage people to work on to build the strength in their feet, in their hips, and improve their balance. So simply toes together, heels apart, get your Tadasana alignment, find your breath, close your eyes. One foot in front, one foot behind, you pick which one you like to do first. Once you've found it, find your alignment, find your breath. Get your drishti, close your eyes. Finally, when you're working on single-legged balance, only get to the point that you feel comfortable closing your eyes. Once you can hold your, once you can do your breath for three or four breaths without even feeling any perturbation of your balance. Otherwise, if you close your eyes immediately, you're going to immediately have to step the foot down and you've lost your balance. So meet yourself where you are today. All right, we're ready to get back down onto this floor. So use the chair if you like, or allow yourself to practice getting down onto the floor the way that we talked about using the position of lunging. So doesn't matter which way you do it. I'm gonna step back with my right foot today. I'm in my lunge position. I'm gonna take a nice deep inhale, brace through my abdominals. And as I exhale, lower myself to the floor into my knee and then simply bring my other knee down. All right, now in that position, once you are down on the floor, allow yourself to check in with your knees, check in with your feet, that they're hip distance, stack the knees on top of the hips for a moment. Bring those hands so that they're directly underneath those shoulders, index fingers are forward. Let's go through three more cat cows. If you used a lot of abdominals and maybe unfortunately a little too many back muscles, it might be nice to get those moving right now. So take an inhale, sink the belly, lift the tailbone, shoulder blades back and down, lengthen the neck, look upward. And then as you exhale, tuck that belly in, curl that tailbone under, chin to chest, gaze into your belly button. Two more times. Inhaling and inhaling and inhaling. See if you can inhale through that whole movement. And then exhaling and exhaling and exhaling and exhaling and exhaling. Great. One last time. Inhaling, 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 inhaling and inhaling. And finally, exhaling, exhaling, exhaling and exhaling. Find the very top of your cat and then slowly begin to push yourself back so that those sit bones are touching those heels. Belly is touching the thighs, chest to the knees. Oh, let's find that child's pose again. Dropping the crown of the head to the floor, chin to the chest, gazing back at those toes. Resting right here, taking a deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. Deep inhale into the belly and exhaling out. Now slowly pushing yourself up, allowing yourself to lay down onto your left or right thigh, you pick, and then slowly bringing yourself down onto your back. Once you make your way down onto your back, Kind of play for a second with a little bit of a tuck and tilt. Kind of find that neutral position for you between your, your pelvis tilt and your tuck. Should be that you have about a finger space or about an inch in your low back if you found a nice good neutral position here. And get those shoulder blades underneath you. And then take your right knee to your chest, hands around that shin bone, lengthen your neck, settle your chin, take a deep inhale into your belly here. And then as you exhale, pull that knee into your chest. And one more time, nice deep inhale. And then as you exhale, pull that knee into your chest. 
You got it. Now with that left leg, slide that left leg straight down on the mat, a little bit of nice opening through that hip flexor since we did some good stuff in standing. And then take your hands to the underside of your knee and really secure that knee to your chest. So let's do one more breath here, deep inhale in. And then as you exhale, pulling that knee into your chest. Good. Now we're going to be straightening the knee and getting some nice, good hamstring length with a little bit of movement of our feet here. So take an inhale and lift your foot up, point your toes towards your head. And then as you exhale, relax that down. Let's do that two more times. Inhaling. And exhaling. And one more time here. Nice deep inhaling. And exhaling. You got it. Now, bring that leg up into its position where you feel that stretch, keeping the knees to the chest. And let's just do some nice good circles of our ankles. So we did a lot of nice work with our feet today. So make sure that you kind of get some clockwise, some counterclockwise movement. And then take a look at your toes and let your toes curl under and let your toes lift towards your head. And kind of do that movement a few times through your toes. Kind of thank them for doing such a good job at getting you some good balance. And then relax your knee down or left leg, slide it up, right foot, place it flat down on the floor beside the left, and then take your left knee to your chest. Take a deep inhale here. Then as you exhale, bring that chin towards your chest. Check in that your, uh, your alignment of your left leg is nice and straight, that that foot isn't pointed inward. One more breath here. Deep inhale in and then exhale, pull that knee into your chest. You got it. So now with that right leg, just take that right leg straight down. Some good opening through that right hip flexor and then bring your hands to the underside of your leg. Kind of pull that knee into your chest. Let's do one more breath here. Deep inhale into the belly. And then as you exhale, pulling that knee into your chest. All right, so we're gonna kind of point our toes up and we're gonna work through a little bit of hamstring flexibility here. So taking an inhale, straightening that leg. And then as you exhale, relaxing. And inhaling and straightening. And exhaling and relaxing. And one more time, let's do a nice deep inhale. And exhale and relaxing. You've got it. Now bring that leg up to the straight position. Make sure your knee stays to your chest. And then start to do some circles through your ankles. Make sure your neck is long and your chin is gently tucked. And then maybe try some in the opposite direction. Just really creating good mobility through that ankle that hopefully you got some extra flexibility through today. And then allow yourself to curl all those toes under and then point them up and curl them under and point them up. Oh, look at all those new muscles you probably didn't even realize you had until today. And then relax the leg down, keeping the left leg where it is, slide the right leg up and then relax the left foot down next to the right. Okay, now right knee, I want you to bring this right knee to your chest and then slide that left leg down again. Now take the right knee and bring the right knee to the center of the chest. Make sure the right pelvis bone is still onto the floor. So don't let your pelvis lift off the floor on the right side. Then the right hand, grab a hold of that right knee. The left hand, grab a hold of that right ankle. So we're just gonna give a little bit of love to our hip rotators. They did some really awesome work when we were in standing. So let's make sure we give them some nice good length. So take a nice deep inhale here. And then as you exhale, gently bring the knee to the chest, lengthen your neck, settle your chin, and then gently start to pull that right ankle towards the left shoulder. Find that beautiful stretch in your right buttock. Take a deep inhale, so slow and so deep into your belly, you feel it go to your pelvic floor. And then exhaling out. One more breath here, nice deep inhaling in. And exhaling out, beautiful. Releasing that left hand from the right ankle, getting the alignment back of that right leg. And then sliding the left leg up first, dropping the right foot down next to the left foot and doing it all over again on the opposite side. So left knee comes up to your chest. And once you have that knee up to your chest, take that right leg and slide it down. And now take that left knee and bring it to the center of your chest, but don't let your left pelvis lift off the floor. 
Then the left hand is going to hold the left knee to the chest. The right hand reaches down and grabs a hold of that right or that left ankle. All right, now keeping that left pelvis on the floor, that's key if you want to get those hip rotators. Take a nice deep inhale here. And then on your exhale, pull the knee towards the center of the chest, lengthen your neck, settle your chin. And then finally, start to use that right arm to pull that left ankle towards the right shoulder. Beautiful. Find your most excellent hip rotator stretch. Then let's do those deep, slow breaths right to the pelvic floor. So nice, deep inhaling in and exhaling out. One more time, deep inhaling in and exhaling out. Slowly releasing the right hand from the left ankle, getting the alignment back of the left leg and then sliding the right leg up, placing the left foot down by the right foot. All right, right foot, right leg, slide it back down, left foot onto that right thigh, right hand, reach for that left knee, left hand out to the side of your body, either straight out or in goal posts. I like goal posts because it allows me feeling my shoulder blade a little bit more on the floor, but you do what works best for you. Take a nice deep inhale here. And then as you exhale, slowly letting that knee come to the right, feel the pelvis now lift. Feel the low back lift, feel the rib cage lift. Left shoulder blade stays on the floor. And then lengthen your neck, settle your chin, and then turn your gaze towards your left. Allow that chin to stay tucked inward on that left side. Take a nice deep inhale into your belly here. And exhaling out. One more time, nice deep inhale in. And exhaling out. Slowly rotating your head, bringing it so that it's pointed upward. Starting at that rib cage first and derotating the rib cage, followed by the low back, followed by the pelvis, followed by that hip, and then place the left foot on the floor. Slide the right leg up, slide the left leg down, right foot, left thigh, left hand, right knee, right arm out to the side of the body, however you choose. Taking a nice deep inhale here, and then on the exhale, pulling that right knee to the left. Feel that beautiful pelvis lift, that low back lift, that rib cage lift, keeping that right shoulder blade down, lengthening your neck, settling your chin, and then turning your gaze towards the right. Oh, yes. Taking a deep inhale into your belly here, and then exhaling out. And one more breath in. And exhaling out. Bringing your head back to the center, starting at that rib cage on that right side, slowly rotating it down, followed by the low back, followed by the pelvis, followed by that hip, placing the right foot on the floor, sliding the left leg up, and then bringing your right knee to your chest, followed by your left knee to your chest. Nice, beautiful hug here. Give me a nice deep inhale. Exhale, pull those knees to your chest. Maybe a nice good little rock of that low back and that pelvis area. And then when you feel like you're ready, gently place your foot on the right on the floor, foot on the left on the floor. Find that comfortable neutral position of your pelvis. Letting your right leg slide down to the right corner of your mat, left leg down to the left corner of your mat. And then once you feel like you've got yourself in that beautiful position, Rolling the shoulder blades under, resting the arms out to the side, palms are lifted, lengthening the neck, settling the chin. All we're going to do, feel where our big toes are, both of them, left and right. As you take a slow inhale, lift them up towards your head. And as you exhale, start to pull them under. Understand that they are one of the key components to balance through your feet. And then relax those big toes. And go up to your buttocks. Take a nice deep inhale. Squeeze the buttocks. Hold your breath. Understand that your glutes and your hip rotators are a key component to your balance. And then as you exhale, relax them completely. 
Now slowly close your eyes. Allow your breath to be very soft and relaxed. And as we rest here for this last moment, just think about which balance exercise was the greatest challenge for you. If it was feet together, start with training your eyes closed. If it was one foot in front of the other, start working on strengthening your feet. And if it was single leg standing, start strategically strengthening more hip muscles. If all three were a challenge, meet yourself where you are and do your best to start doing them each and every day. Now start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. And then some nice good circles with your wrists and your ankles, maybe in each direction, depending on what you feel like today. And then sliding one leg up, followed by the other. And slowly letting yourself roll over onto your side. Resting there for a moment, maybe a breath, two, three, whatever you need. And then when you're ready, on an exhale, top hand and bottom elbow pushes yourself up into a seated position. And once you're there, find yourself in a comfortable, easy pose for you. Hmm. <clears throat> Hands are to our hearts and smiles are on our faces. Nice deep inhale in. Exhaling out. Namaste. The highest in me salutes. The highest in you. Thank you for joining me today.